Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to XPN Local Studio Session. My name is Abdul Rahman. Today we're celebrating Jamaican Independence Day, and what better way to do it with some local artists who are Jamaican to be able to celebrate reggae music and to have a conversation with them about the three topics that I feel like reggae music is consistent with when it comes to love, God, and revolution. So I want to introduce these local artists. You can introduce yourself. My name is Neil Chambers Sr. My name is Frederick Guthrie. I also go by Fred Genius. My name is Daniel Joseph Hallwalker, also known as Dan Good. I'm Balmore. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all for coming through. I appreciate y'all like the time to be able to perform for us and like do the, celebrate reggae music. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, Big Dog. Yes, sir. Now I do want to ask a question. Most of the time, when you, if you're a casual listener to reggae music, the first thing you can maybe think of is Bob Marley and the Wailers. So I'm going to ask you guys, what are some artists and group, reggae artists and groups that you guys grew up listening to that may have been either underrated, in your opinion, overlooked, or may have not gotten the same attention in America that other reggae artists have? Woodrow Bon Don. Definitely grew up on Woodrow. <laughs> I mean, he's one of the ones that I think people may know, but... Okay. Um, I know I my parents old school. Toots and the Matos. That's like an older era. Toots and the Matos. Yeah. A lot of ska and more up tempo. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the party stuff. <laughs> I think I think for us, um, we weren't really allowed to listen to secular music in the crib, so we had like Grace Thrillers and Papa Son Stitchy. Oh, of course. Yeah, just so you know, we, we very conservative. Uh, Pentecostal upbringing, okay. But even though we we would we would sneak some uh some music in the house, so and then uh, with exposure wise, like so so the selection I'm about to do today, Terrace Riley's um she's royal, Auntie Helen, my my aunt Come that's on. that's one of her favorite records. Okay. So every whenever, cookout, every cookout, she every... she uh, and her husband is a is a DJ. He he was putting selections together before streaming, so hard copy work. That's real. Uh, very focused stuff. I was talking to you, Fred, earlier a little bit about like how some artists, reggae artists, a lot of them, they get recognition outside of the country, just not more so in America. Why do you feel like a lot of them may not get the love and appreciate that they do in other countries that may not always uh, fall on uh, the right ears in America? Um, I mean, I don't. It's in America. It's like kind of more niche and dependent on the region. I mean, you'll find Jamaicans anywhere now. Don't get me wrong, but. Other co- countries, they just appreciate. Well, my understanding is they appreciate the actual value the music is bringing, mm. like lyrical content. It's a lot of reggae music is, believe it or not, very simple. It's all a feel, though. It's how you mm. play it. You know what I'm saying? The people you playing with. It's like the spirit is in the music. Okay. Yeah. So, I think just other countries connect with that, the, that real like them lyrics. You know what I'm saying? That beat, that rhythm that you always, you know, reggae is gonna give you that. Mm. You wanna, you wanna kind of move. You mm-hmm. want to. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like American pop culture does not allow for Jamaican inclusion unless we in a club. Right. Mm. Um, mm. And and like world cultures just value Jamaican music because it's 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 not to always... me it's a love language. Like mm-hmm. we are we like are that. very. If if it's not Nigerians who can really put put a sentence together and fly off a language, a Jamaican can really do that. We take the long way around, but it's beautiful. Um, Baby love met me talk to you one time. You know you put it like a flower. Sweetness. Sweet, 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 sweet like sugar. Yeah, so J- Jamaican Jamaican Brownie. love songs, man, like it, there's no there's no more beautiful song if you ask me. Hmm. I agree. Um, I was yeah. there. Somebody else? Yeah, uh, well, for me personally, I know um, coming from the spaces we're coming from, you know, we we, we live in a very cover this song culture, mm-hmm. um, and what I found is reggae is it's it's very easily mimicked, um, mm. but I say it's mimicked and it's it's not very often duplicated by somebody outside of the culture, um, and partly I think it's because we have to go through different things, and it also it's very difficult to play music identically um, if you don't feel the music. Mm. And I feel like reggae is so it's it's such a tricky thing. If you don't feel it, you can't play it. But you have to be able to like deconstruct it the right way. I don't know, I don't even know, man. It's such a it's such a wild thing. I think for us, we come from it, mm-hmm. so we know how to feel the music. Okay. We know how to like just let it come through us and leave us, as opposed to like being like a cheap copy of the thing. Like you could tell us. Yeah, I can add saying? to that because um, we we spent some time in San Diego, 
and they have like a version of reggae out there, mm-hmm. and it's it's cool, but you can just re- you realize that there's something missing. Mm. Um, so being um, from Jama- of J- of Jamaican heritage, you know we have gone back to Jamaica. We've come to America, and 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 we lived amongst Jamaicans, and we like we we just get it. It's just <laughs> it just flow, you know. So. Um, what is it in particular that's missing? I don't know if you can even. You can't quantify it, put, man. If, put a put a word to it. Yeah, okay, I think it's know. intuition. If it's a word that we could put together, it got to be intuitive, and it's intuitive to us because we have a personal attachment to the culture. Mm-hmm. That's right. People who are you know, and I'm not gonna knock nobody. Like if, if you start in a garage band, the first two genres you're gonna pick is rock or reggae. That's yeah. how mm-hmm. you're gonna start. So I don't I don't uh, disparage anybody who attempts to to get the sound together. As long as you're doing your due diligence in in completing the sound, that's real. You know, boy, you just name drop this podcast, John. Bro, I wasn't shameless, <laughs> plus, but shout out to the Double D boys. <laughs> <laughs> I just cheaped that too. All right, shameless nah. So plug. what's the uh, again? What was the first song? Are you guys gonna perform for us today? We're gonna do that. Uh, Terrace Riley, she's a uh, royal record. Okay, so you're now gonna listen to Baltimore, Dan Good, Fred Guthrie, and Othniel perform. Uh, She's Royal by Terrence Riley right here on XPN Local. Yes, sir. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. Never been someone blind until I seen her eyes, and now I have to try. Hey, oh yeah, let me get my words right and then approach her. I'll treat you way a man is supposed to. You never have to cry. I know everyone can relate to when they find a special someone. She's royal, yeah, so royal. I want her in my life. I never knew anyone so one of a kind. The way she moved to her home beat, she has the qualities of a queen. She's a queen. Beauty, don't need no makeup to be a cutie. She's a queen, yeah, yeah. And when you ask what a good woman's made of, she's not afraid or ashamed of who she is. She's royal, yeah, so royal. Yeah. I want her. Never knew anyone so one of a kind until the night that I see those eyes. Right to now, good man, it's hard to find. And so she tell him about the far line. That's why she has no ties at this time. Yeah, I know every man is trying, but she needs to be more than wine and dine because she's royal. Yeah, so royal. And I want her. So one of a kind. Hey, the way she moved to her own beat. 
she has the qualities of a queen. She's a queen. Hey, hey, what a natural beauty. Don't need no makeup to be a cutie. She is a queen. Yeah. And when they ask what a good woman's made of. She's not afraid or ashamed of who she is. She's royal, yeah. So royal, yeah. I want her in my life. I never knew anyone so one of a kind until the night that I see your eyes. Someone shy until I seen her eyes, right. and now I have to try. You just heard She's Royal by Taurus Riley, performed by Balmore, Dan Good, Fred Guffrey, and Off Neil. Again, we're here at XPN Local Studio Session. My name is Abdur Rahman, celebrating Jamaican Independence Day while also highlighting the three. Uh, topics that I believe reggae music covers a lot love God and revolution the first one we heard was love one thing I like the lyrics in uh, she's royal when mm -hmm. it said like you know no I've never been I've never been someone shy till I've seen your eyes mm -hmm. you know the kind of vulnerability vulnerability to be able to at least be honest about how you feel about a woman and what I I think that's interesting because to me R&B music now specifically male R&B singers do not have that kind of vulnerability when it comes to love songs. No. So I wanted to ask you guys, you know, and like what is it uh like what is it that you feel like keeps that vulnerability in reggae music when it comes to love where it doesn't change because I don't think I don't think that's it's changed. Well, you guys know better than me but over the past 20 like since 2000 like the past two decades. So if it has changed do you notice it? If not, why do you feel like it's been able to keep that vulnerability in their love songs? Uh, if you ask me, I think <clears throat> like music will always update with the times. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to a, a let's say a Jamaican styled party, let's say it started at two a.m., you go you gonna hear different you gonna hear different vibes, man. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the music, the reggae that uh, you grew up with, uh, the vestiges of of that kind of music isn't still present. Mm -hmm. So you got people who are making, I mean, I listen to uh, Chronics before work every, every morning, probably. Mm. Um, Chronics know how to write a love song. He actually yes, wrote he a, a yes. wrote an old to Jamaica, a love song to Jamaica called, I think it's called Smile. Smile. Uh, so so there's, there's still um, agents who are keeping reggae close to his roots. Okay. And then you got people who who updated just like um, how, uh, you know, people nitpick about Neo Soul and R&B and how it's not in a comfortable place. But uh, outside of what you hear on the radio and, and what's on your uh feature playlist if you do a deep dive you're gonna find uh, that kind of music still okay yeah and i think it's a, just a new era like you were saying like there's a lot of the i guess ratchet dance hall style now but there's also a lot of dope reggae artists that still staying true to the culture and i mean you still got the classics they i ain't gonna lie the old jesus running around here like they young torn <laughs> maybe yeah. everywhere literally mm -hmm. they doing buju is coming to philly and yes, uh, yes he is yes he is when is that September? Mm -hmm. oh, I think wow. so. I seen the flyer this morning. As, as did I. He must have just dropped it this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think it dropped today. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. it's just the show. Like reggae to me is a music where it 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 will always update with the time because it's a part of like what becomes fresh. Because even a lot of the Afro beat vibes, mm -hmm. some of them rhythms is like From reggae me. rhythms. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like That's it's facts. like That's facts. It's a lot of we all share music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think reggae did hit. Africa in a strong way because now a lot of them artists got a, a feel like reggae. You know okay. what I'm saying? I agree. And I rock with it. I, I like it. I think the diaspora borrowing and lending to to itself is is pretty cool to yep. watch. That's real. Oh, I didn't know if anybody. Else. Yeah, I actually wanted to um, touch on something real quick. I think the cool thing about reggae um, that we may not necessarily talk about is the roots, um, but contextually speaking, we asked earlier why why do you think that um, 
the staying power for being vulnerable is still there. Mm-hmm. And I think because historically, um, we, as a people, go back, music is kind of all we had in terms of, you know, like what we can give away in terms of what we can get back. Mm-hmm. We really didn't have much to lose. That's why a man can leave his house, go work the field for 10 hours and come back loving his wife. You know saying? You could be vulnerable because at least, at least in American culture now, R&B, we do have a lot to lose. That's why That's why a lot of our men don't really sing about love. You know, they're trying to mm. keep the image. They're trying to keep the, the masculinity aspect. They're trying to keep the, the, the okay. macho and stuff. We didn't really have all that to lose. You know what I'm saying? We had our family. We had our God. We had our mission. Mm. So that's why we could sing about those three things and lose nothing and mm. not feel less than. You know what I'm saying? And I think because that's so woven into the culture of reggae, we can still keep that. Even even us, we, we, we born here but we were our blood is from there we can still sing those songs and still lose nothing okay. and still gain so much okay well you you think about getting a girl or whatever like that 80s imagery of you standing outside her window with a boot uh, a boom box come to mind hey girl um and, uh, yelling at her through the window yo i love you nobody does that better than a jamaican man yeah. <laughs> i'm telling you the, the way they string words together uh you will you will lose your girl to him Nobody oh, talk happy. Yeah, nobody nobody does that better than than Jamaican. So our, our ability just to put pen to pad and create something that uh just really touches your soul is is bar nut. Okay, that's real. They, you know it's funny you mentioned, you know, you guys going back to your roots and like from love and God, which goes back to the next song that we're about to perform, which is gonna be the topic about God. Can you tell us what song that is? Yeah, for sure. So this song is, uh, I don't know the proper name of the song, but I grew up as Hear My Cry, Oh, oh Lord. Yes, yes. I don't know if that's the proper name. I, it probably got a completely different name to somebody else. Um, <laughs> but that song quite literally, it's a simple message, man. You know, it's 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 a it's a message of help. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we say like. Seeking you know, help? Literally seeking help. You know, mm-hmm. the, the meaning, help me. Uh, like, mm-hmm. It's literally asking God, like, all right, Lord, you see what I'm going through. Um, but also I'm acknowledging that my help literally comes from, from you. you. Yeah. That's quite nice. quite literally. That's a simple, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 such a crazy, crazy message and a crazy uh statement. It's it's a good job. It's and it's scripture. perfect for now too, because yeah, it's a scripture and yeah. this is one of the songs we used to sing on the choir mm-hmm. yeah. back oh, in wow. the day. Oh, we so was all in the same choir, so Okay. It's like it's fitting. At a Jamaican church. Yes, yep. sir. Hey, good times, man. Good times. A lot of hours. A lot of, a lot of hours in one day. <laughs> I bet, I bet. All right, now we're about to hear Hear My Cry, Oh Lord, again with Off Neil, Fred Guthrie, Dan Good, Baltimore, celebrating Jamaican independence by performing songs that have to do with God, love, and revolution right here on XPN Local. You ready?
We're back. You just heard Hear My Cry, O oh Lord, by Marvia Providence. Brought to you by Balmore, Dan Good, Fred Guthrie, Off Mill. Again, we are here at XPN Studio Local Session celebrating Jamaican Independence Day by playing songs, the topic of love, God, and revolution. The second song we just heard was about God. So I wanted to ask you guys, you know, one of the things I'm noticing, again, the most common thing is about God or spirituality. You know, whether it's from a, like an upbeat song like that that kind of sounds like some, like in the gospel or church or either something that's kind of Rastafarian that's kind of mellow and laid back. There's always some kind of spiritual type of theme of, of the giving thanks to a higher one. So I'm going to ask you guys, like, what is that kind of is that observation accurate? And if so, why do you feel like it is accurate that majority of reggae music does want to acknowledge some kind of higher being in their music? After we sung that song, I, you know, I found myself saying "beautiful, beautiful, beautiful," right? Mm -hmm. And when you go to Jamaica, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful, not only the people, but the atmosphere, mm -hmm. the 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 um, the land. Mm -hmm. There's fruit growing everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's water flowing through the mountains. Mm -hmm. Everything that you need is there. So. I think it's easy to see God in that. Mm. When you walk outside and you can just smell, you know, the animals, you can smell the water, you can smell rotten fruit, <laughs> you know, and then you just you just embrace that. I'm here and I have everything I need. Mm. Who gave this to me? Mm, I like that. Jaja. Ja. Mm -hmm. Just want to bless you and I'm right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you. You don't have to spend money. Mm. I like. I've noticed that even too. It's like it, from what you describe, it's almost like there's always a reason to give thanks. Always. Always. Sure. What do Jamaicans say all the time? Hundred percent. Give, give, give thanks. Give thanks. Yeah. Give big, thanks. Big ups. When you hear some of the humble beginnings, like I know I talk to my parents all the time about how they came up, and it's like. Some of the things we take for granted was like really a luxury for them. We, I, if I want right now, get a burger, get mm -hmm. a steak, whatever. They only had meat on one day out the week because oh, wow. they had to conserve. They had to make it last for everybody. The family big. It's like, hmm. and then it's like they growing food, so that's what they survive off of. All the the chocho -cho and the, the 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 greens and the. Aki they got and the breadfruit and whatever they grown off the land. That's the majority of what they're eating. Mm -hmm. So it's also like you got to be thankful because the food that you have is something that you either grew or you had the catch or like fish or catch yeah. or something. So Definitely. someone in the family is immediately involved in getting your food. Mm -hmm. Okay, like hands on right there. They're going out back and getting the coconut that you're gonna drink the water mm -hmm. from. And you gonna eat your banana that they boiling? They about to go to the tree and poke, and get the banana down. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's like you literally watch it. Like, do you feel like um, the older generation, like how your parents keeps you kind of grounded a little bit to remind you of that spirituality or that faith? And like whether it's um an, on a daily basis or even with your own music. Most That's, definitely for me, yeah. just my family in general. I have my whole family is a church family. Majority of my family either is currently in church or uh -huh. went to church or everybody's had the same or similar upbringing. I ain't going to say the same because right. everybody different, you know, but we, we, I think for me, the older I get, the more, uh, a lot of what my parents said, res that, like the things that I know are right mm -hmm. resonate mm -hmm. and I don't have to question it now. Right. Yeah. As a kid, you know, you want to. I was going to say something similar. Like, well, like I, my, I had some growing pains when it came to a question like that. Like, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, <clears throat> when you were a child, they make it very evident. Like, yo, I came from this and this, and this is what you have. How, how dare you be ungrateful? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so there's some growing pains in that. Now that I'm an adult, especially not me having kids of my own, trying to teach them mindfulness and gratefulness and all these things, I look at lessons my parents directly gave me. I'm like, yo. This morning I had a oh I understand moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like and, and those moments come to me frequently now having kids of my own. Like there was growing pains, but like now I understand why I should be grateful. Cause uh, giving my kids, my, my daughter walk around with an iPad uh, uh, eight hours of the day. God forbid <laughs> I take it from her. Uh, uh, so, so and then uh, uh, one thing I wanted to add is like uh, I know if people <clears throat> who don't come from this lifestyle might be listening to these responses about the country like. And are, might, might be thinking to themselves, oh, outside the resort, maybe life is difficult. That's right. But challenge that mindset. 
Like when you're practicing gratefulness, which the entire island practices gratefulness, when you practice that mm. every day, yeah. it changes how you look at the world. For sure. that's every true. single meal you receive is a blessing. Yeah. Every bit of water you drink that's clean is a blessing. Yeah. Being able to share a meal with people you're close to is a, a blessing. blessing. Y'all, that remind, not to cut y'all, that reminds yeah. me of, um, I told you, uh, Fred, earlier, like, uh, uh, Damian Marley song that he has with Nas, mm -hmm. I count your blessings. Mm -hmm. Like just one of that is one of those feelings where it's like you just give you a reason to be grateful, give you mm -hmm. a reason to be blessed mm -hmm. because you don't know that this could be you, you can it could be worse. You couldn't have that stuff. You couldn't have a family that mm -hmm. cares that eat food with. You know you couldn't have like you know food or just regular just clean water. So I, I agree with that. Yeah, God first, bro. Every Jamaican family I come across, uh, like what what it what's imparted to me from these people in this order is probably God, family. And then this island, mm -hmm. and right. for an mm -hmm. island so so small, I don't know how long it take to drive across the radius of Jamaica. Probably four or five hours, if that. Yeah. Oh wow! But for, for an island that small, the national heritage and pride is so big. Representation yeah. but, is crazy, right? But it's only it's only a third to family, and mm -hmm. it's only only a God family in uh in that island, bro. That's real, man. That's real. Right. If you, man, like I saw the spirit come in again to you like that a little bit. Hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. Is that like one of those songs, like uh, those like from reggae songs that maybe you like to sing on your own? Like, is there other songs that maybe like you guys perform, like or just play them like from your own? Like for you, have, uh, Bomber having children, that like, you kind of play uh, that kind of represent like, like what you guys were talking about with being thankful. You know what's crazy? It's so it's so wild. When we were, we were thinking of songs to sing, um, that wasn't one of the songs that I haven't sang that song in 10, 12 years. You mm -hmm. could have fooled me. I do. I that's not a song that I sing. So like. That's a song that my brother suggested I sing, and I said, "You know what's crazy? That song is wild, but that should speak to like how in, how ingrained mm. like just muscle memory, spirit, man. Yo, the spirit is is into the music, and I, I think about like you know me and my girlfriend. We talk about it all the time. Like we hear some crazy stories out of Jamaica, just in headlines and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. um, even like the murderers and the people who like would do ill, they have a crazy reverence." Like a crazy reverence for God. Like they be doing something, whatever. They see somebody in store, and then somebody's grandmother, you know, God, God, say you must stop running. Like yes, yes, mother. And, they, and then they're <laughs> done for their like the rest of their life crime. It's it's nuts. Um, but songs like those, mm. um, it's like I'm not gonna say it's like riding a bicycle because you know you, you you can relearn how to ride a bicycle. I don't think you ever unlearn what you learn in those songs. They just stick with you. It's very it's mm. very glueish. You know I'm saying, um, and I think for me personally, songs like those. Um, they take on a new meaning the older you get in life. You yeah, know, that's y'all right. yep. y'all talk about like, you know, we we do, we we do have privileges. Like like we we are privileges. You know, my grandmother would tell me like, you know, she used to have to pick and choose whether or not she was gonna walk to school, like with shoes on. Like she had to pick and choose whether or not she was gonna mm -hmm. go barefoot, because mm -hmm. um, she had to make sure the shoes last for the next two years. Um, and I think about my life. You know, we dealing with things like bills. Um, man, like my car don't start. Some people don't got a car. Um, right. You know what I'm saying my house is hot. Some people don't got a house. So in situations like that, hearing my cry back then meant something different than it does now. But it's the same sentiment. It's mm -hmm. the same vein. It's the same mm -hmm. spirit, and the same spirit that'll slap them silly when they're singing it in 1957. <laughs> it's the same spirit that's gonna knock us crazy in 2024, 2025. Like we still need songs as much as we need the spirit. Then we still need it now, which means the songs we needed. Then we the still need, need now. You that's know what real. That's and they got the same word, strength. man. We delivering the word today, dog. Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm really talking to him on the airwaves, son. That's real, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I felt that. That's real. That's real. Now, before we get out here, we got one more song to get into, which has to do with revolution. What song is that that you're going to end this uh, great special with today? Redemption song. Oh, by Bob. By Bob Marley. All right. Bob Z. We're going to hear Redemption by Bob Marley, by Off Neil, Fred Guthrie, Dan Good, Baltimore, right here at XPN Local Studio Session, celebrating Jamaican Independence Day.
just heard Redemption Song by Bob Marley, by Off Neil, mm. Fred Guthrie, Dan Good, Balmore, all here today to represent Jamaican Independence Day at XPN Studio Local Session. My name is Abdur Rahman. Thank you again, all for all four of you guys. And you too, Dylan, on the bass. Shout well out to Dylan, man. Um, yeah. Shout, Shout out to Dylan. Yeah, hold it's it down. Everybody, <laughs> everybody. Like, that joint is so fire, man. So you guys talked about, you know, kind of your family keeping, you guys remembering of the history you know, uh, your roots and for God as well. Are there any memories or any stories that you guys remember hearing uh, when it came to Jamaican Independence Day uh, that kind of stick out to you? Um, stick out, stick out to you guys still to this day. That's a good question. I think most of the conversation has been surrounded surrounding uh, like the fallout 
Um, mm. You know, uh, the the British severely mismanaged the diaspora as it relates to the Caribbean islands. Okay. Um, my eye-opening experience for me is my first time in Jamaica. I went to grab maybe a soda or something from the shop. Soda got dang, what, $90? Oh. <laughs> and I looked at my grandma with tears in my eyes like, I don't have it. I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, and, and that like that severe inflation is just like one ramification of uh, oh, wow. them just not really caring about um, the people under their rule. So hmm. us being able, able to be free from them, um, like that kind of, like that fallout is like what's frequently referenced. Okay, uh, the state of the island since that, and us, uh, you know, as a people pulling it back into a better place. Uh, so it was a big celebration stateside. Hmm. Uh, but I've never had the pleasure of being in Jamaica on Jamaica Independence Day. That's well. I was there <laughs> once, and it is lit. Yeah. But um, as f- I know, the f- just the fact that in my parents' lifetime is when they got independence is uh-huh. like still kind of wild to me. But it's like they remember the day. Like they hmm. would tell me like where they were in the island, what was going on. It was like a big parade going around and everything. It's like. That even alone to me is crazy, <clears throat> but it just shows like we born in America and like pri- I know I'm born in a way more privileged situation than some of my other even cousins that's like my age that were born on the island. Mm-hmm. You know now they uh, you know some of them have like traveled since and you know gone different places and done like better for themselves. But it's like just even the fact that I could go to school in this country mm-hmm. be. Not you know, not worry about having some place to live as a kid because my parents both work in this country. Mm. They both like provided for us in this country. It's like it's not until like my grown years that I'm truly like grateful and understand how blessed I really like have been. Like I'm reminded to be thankful. Yeah, all the time. I still got family down there right now. Mm-hmm. They still living in whatever they living in right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like they got the most money in the world. They just living off the land. Like what we talked about earlier. Living off the land. They tend to their animals. They mm. make sure the house clean. Mm. They take care of what they got and they grateful. That's mm-hmm. right. Like, and one thing I noticed even in Redemption song, uh, a line that stuck, two lines that stuck out to me, which says, emancipate your rep- yourselves from mental slavery. Mm. None but ourselves can free our minds. Like, And he's talking about during the, like all the stuff that's happening to them and still saying the only way, that, the first thing that starts is changing you, changing yourself. So I want to ask you all, you know, from hearing that song and even the stuff that you guys have heard throughout like for Jamaica Independence Day, do you feel like revolution or true redemption only can start first with yourself or... You know, is there something? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to, you can only control yourself. That's real. Yeah. You know, so you start with what you can control and you can make those decisions. You can change your mind. You can change the decisions that you make and those decisions change who you are ultimately. That's real. And um, that's when, that's when the revolution begins. Yeah. It starts, it starts in the mind, man. And, and I, I'm not this is like unresearched. I'm not trying to add no conjecture into the mix. But I'm pretty sure that have no fear for atomic energy line is a Cold War reference. Mm. I'm pretty I, it, it, I'm pretty it sure. It sounds accurate. Is. Uh so <laughs> if, if Bob Marley's saying have no fear for nuclear powers, mm. that's definitely a huge mental shift. Because in the face of nuclear power, what yeah, that's what, real. what 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 could you do? So him mm. him claiming power internally mm. is really saying a ton. I th- I think in this I'm not going to talk about the political climate and, and the ramifications of that, but if we can adopt some of that mentality, mm-hmm. I think each individual could pull the people around them into a much better place. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you're saying not being afraid of whatever comes. Right. Because you're, secure, you're securing self. Where's fear? Man, listen, I think, and, and, and it's, I love that y'all bring up the have no fear for atomic energy. The first thing that came to my mind was like the only thing stronger than an atomic bomb is the person controlling the atomic bomb. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If we can touch their heart, mm-hmm. If we can touch the person behind the gun, if we can touch the person behind the the vehicle, behind the buttons, behind the podium, like I think that's hmm. peak revolutionary status. Is just like yo, let's let's we we're not talking about corruption. We don't not we don't want to corrupt them, but like if we can just change their thought pattern, change their thought, um, their 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 not even their intentions, just like touch their heart with this music. Maybe they'll be like, oh, you know what's crazy? Maybe I don't gotta 
destroyed two billion people. You know what I'm saying? Maybe right. I don't got to hit the Thanos snap. Like I think I think that's I think that's has literally been like most of the mission really in that's this right. music. Is is I think that that really changes it. Like yeah, bro. And I'm I'm like really as you talk, I'm examining these lyrics from the beginning of the song to the end, and it's really like this chronological time. I I never, I never peep how well this song was written. A yeah. chronological timeline from people leaving the western coast of Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Old Pyrus, yes, they rabbi. That's what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. He's talking about Joseph. Is that what he's talking about? He's talking about Joseph. Old Pyrus, yes, they rabbi. Showed I to the merchant ships. Just minutes after oh, they God. took I from the bottomless pit. That is Joseph. Oh, wow. It's biblical. It's even farther back. Oh, it's definitely <laughs> biblical. Definitely biblical. I guess that, like, that kind of makes you, I guess it, it's instilled into your brain like mm-hmm. to, not, to never forget. Hey. And also, like to how you guys said, like why there's probably uh, I guess a, a big pride in that small country is like you know what you've been through so it's like we're prideful that we're, we're happy that we're here but we also don't take it for granted mm-hmm. yeah that's real that's can't real. take it for granted that's, oh, real. Man. <laughs> that's one of the strongest things we got is this music man and I think I think for me personally um you know not even just me personally so many of the people I know they lose their roots and their culture mm-hmm. just just by living Like they're not even Trying to lose it They're not trying to Put it away or hide it But generation after generation You get so engulfed In what's going on These these days To sound like an old head Or whatever um, That they just end up Weeding out their culture By osmosis mm-hmm. Just by accident um, But I think this craziness That we got going on here Is just like yo How do you pass on These nursery rhymes You know what I'm saying The dead yard the, You know what I'm saying I don't even know How mm-hmm. I knew about that beat Like I don't know How I knew about that drum It's in you It's in That's And, and, that's, and that's such a That's the it's, beauty it's of it true. all That's the beauty of it all yeah. man. A lot of the stuff We Like I, I know I've been to a few In my lifetime You know In Jamaica Mm-hmm Jones is whole it's, li- it's, it's crazy. I know it's crazy. Yeah, but it's like they are. Li- it's like a celebration. It's yeah. just, it's like you know someone passed, but it's like all the communities out. You see people you haven't seen. Like oh boy, I'm in oil since you're this big. Oh, da, da. I'm like, <laughs> you know, but it's like bro. you start to meet everyone. Everybody's like, it's a, it's a communal thing, and I feel like right now, especially right now in America, we need to be a community. Like a lot of the stuff that's happening. I, I think it wouldn't even affect us as bad if we was a tight community mm-hmm. because we wouldn't care as much as letting outside influences Cause you dictate. Got one, we got because yeah, we got each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I could rely on you, you could rely on me. We help each other when, ah, this is my downtime. We help each other. Oh, mm-hmm. this is your downtime. I help you. Like, family. That's real. That whole aspect, like like I said, I grew up with these guys. Like, if any of them hit me for anything, it's family. First of all, they getting priority just because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew y'all. Like, it's like literally that was what was ingrained in me, I think, from mm. such a young age. And okay. it's like, yeah, I have a big family, but also I have a big extended family. It's like mm. community. Like, this is how we going to change the world, I think, because it's no other. Everything, we're distracted. We're also distracted. You know what I'm saying? That's Reggae right. music reminds me a lot of times, like about the stuff that's happening for real. Because mm-hmm. it ain't. How long was Redemption song was written? You said Cold War reference. It, we I, in twenty four, right? Cold War reference. Yeah. Yeah. That song so could resonate literally six day. Ah, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like some of them same things he talking about is happening. I feel like in America we just now starting to wake up to a lot of stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. outside of here. You that's know what real. I mean? Because we're very insulated. We're American. We're like. <laughs> America, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? like that's all of us. Again, thank you all for coming. You know, uh, I appreciate being able to do this tribute to our reggae music because we are at XPN. We're very, we're big fans of reggae music, and felt that it was very proper to be able to do that with some actual Jamaicans who uh, have a good history with the uh, culture, and you know, could be able to talk to us and be able to uh, educate us more about things that we didn't know. So, thank you again. Before you guys go, can you tell us, you know, how they, people can get in touch with you all and what you got coming up uh, later on in the future? Uh, Balmore on everything social media and streaming. That's B-A-L-M-O-U-R. I think maybe there's an underscore afterwards on Twitter. Uh, the Code of the Righteous is my next body of work. Okay. Um, it's my sophomore effort. Uh, it's complete. It's looking to drop this year. So please keep your ear to the streets for that. Uh, we, my group, um, the Outer Youth Ministry is like a composite choir, mm-hmm. um, headed by myself and Marjo Overton, the jazz pianist. Uh, check him out, please. Um, this plug is getting a little long. We're at Hash and B, um, August, uh, 26th. Like we're, that. we're at, uh, World Cafe Live for oh. a month, a semi-monthly, uh, jam session. Okay. So you guys can catch us there on August 26th. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
My name is Daniel. Um, you can catch me on Instagram, that boy good. That's T H A T B O Y G O O D E. Same on Twitter. Um, yeah, we are just living and getting it. We have a uh, coming up uh, September twenty seventh, Auburn Music Hall. We're gonna be there for the county John pull up. You know what I'm saying ticks are available uh, even now. You know what I'm saying time is running out at this point. So uh, pull up on us. Outside of that, you know we just keep making music. Um, I got an EP coming on the way like next year sometime called uh, It's All Good. So stay locked for that, mm-hmm. uh, and we proceed. Yeah, it's a uh, Fred Genius. That's F R E D G E N I V S V. Where the you should be, but um, Fred Genius on all socials. Uh, man, I'm just out here living my vibe. I'm teaching. I got some uh, stuff coming up in what's August? August 17th. I'm playing at. Uh, sculpture Courtyard All right. John is having an art understar So local artists Gonna be doing their thing I'm gonna be playing Alongside with uh, Dahi on the sax okay. And uh, oh, My boy I think Taj Taj and Young Food DJing So You know That's a vibe We got uh, Actually on the same day I'm gonna be at Urban Art Gallery as well The 17th So um, There's that What else is coming up But uh, yeah Just follow Type in on the socials And you'll Catch all the updates As they come Othniel Chambers Sr. on all uh, streaming platforms on socials. Othniel, O-T-H-N-E-I-L. You'll see my logo. It's an O with a cross. Um, follow the huddle up as well. T-H-E-H-V-D-D-L-E-U-P. Yep. Um, this is an organization where we inspire community enrichment through art, teamwork, and innovation. August 10th, we are gathering at John Hines National Wildlife Refuge, and we're we're gonna learn about hunting. All right, we're gonna go there back you to go. our roots. All and, right. Um, we're gonna we're gonna see what's up with this next hunting season. Try try to get us a deer. Delicious. Let's go. <laughs> All, right. All right. So uh, tap in with the huddle. Tap in with me. I have a project coming out called Passion and Pain. Mm-hmm. Um, two, Fire. Two song EP. Um, and yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yo. Again, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all for just coming through and just rocking out with us. You then listening to XPN Studio Local. We just finished representing and celebrating Jamaica Independence Day. So again, my name is Abdul Rahman. Peace, stay blessed, and keep listening to XPN.